All right, let's talk about the CISM, the Certified Information Security Manager exam. If you're going to move into cybersecurity leadership, governance, risk management, this certification is a game changer. I passed my CISM exam and in this video, I'll be walking you through exactly what I did, how I did it, my study strategy, the resources I used, and any exam day tips. And also, if you stay to the very end, I have one bonus that's going to help you as you plan to take the CISM exam. So if that's something you're looking to do, stay tuned and let's get into it. If this is your first time on the CyberSec Migrant, welcome. I release videos on this channel that talks about cybersecurity, mostly from an immigrant lens. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. We're on a push to get to our first 1,000 subscribers. So if you can, help us get there. Every single subscription helps. Share this with your friends and we look forward to you coming back for more of the great videos we put out on this channel. So let's talk about this CISM exam. It's an exam that's actually set up by ISACA. ISACA is the Information Systems Audit and Control Association. So it's one of ISACA's key exams. It's primarily focused on information security management, particularly governance, risk, and compliance aspect of it. It's, it's one of the few exams that is also classed as a management level exam, along with say the CISSP, for example. So both exams are management level exams. And if you're thinking about taking the CISSP or the CISM, stay tuned. I'll be raising a video soon. that's going to be talking about the CISSP and comparing that with the CISM. So if you're thinking about both or you have both of them, which one is better for what reasons, stay tuned for that video coming out in a couple of weeks. But first, I want us to talk about the CISM exam. What exactly is the CISM exam? The CISM exam is, like I said, it's a structured uh, exam organized by the by ISACA. Uh, it's about an exam of 150 questions, uh, and you have about four hours to take that those those um, questions. Like I did in the previous videos, uh, I'm just going to share my screen here, show you a bit of what it looks like, some information we can get about the CISM exam so but while we do that while we start let's just clear up or talk about the things that i did to prepare for the cism exam and the resources i used and what i did to actually make sure that i give myself the best chance in the exam so understanding the exam structure like i said earlier the cism exam has 150 questions covering four different domains we've got information security governance which is 24 percent information risk management at 30 percent Information security program development and management at 27% and information security incident management at 19%. You get four hours to complete the exam and you need a passing score of 450 out of 800 to pass. And that exam isn't really all about how you can think like a security manager. That's not what it's about. It's not about technical implementation, but about making business driven security decisions. And that is the key with the CISM. It's about decisions that are business driven for the business. What you can do to get the business to succeed. How can you do the best for the business? That's what you want to do with the CISM exam. Now let's get into a bit more detail around the CISM exam. That's going to help you with the exam. First, let's talk about understanding the CISM exam. The CISM exam is uh, an exam that has 150 questions. It covers four different domains. If you look here at the SACA bank, at the official webpage, it affirms your ability to assess risk, effect, implement effective governance, and proactively respond to risks. Uh, so there's quite a lot of information there around the CISM exam, and there's four domains, like I said, information security governance, information security risk management, information security program. And so domain one is information security governance. It's 17%, you know, enterprise governance and information security strategy. Domain two is 20% information security risk management, covers information security risk assessment, information security risk response. Domain three is 33%, which is the information security program uh, covering information security program development, as well as information security program management. And finally, you've got domain four, which is incident management, and that is 30% of the exam. And it's about incident management readiness, incident management operations, and everything that goes with that. There's also a couple of supported tasks, you know, what you need to do, identify and internal and external influences, you know, establish and or maintain an information security governance framework and a variety of things. So there's about 37 different things here that are the things you need to think about as you plan for the CISM exam. So that's really, there's, there's a lot about the exam, but it's really just those four areas. What, 
how well can you think about your information security governance program? How well can you implement one? How well can you manage information security incidents? And how well do you, you know, manage that risk as well? And don't forget, if you notice one thing is common to all of these domains, it is the fact it is at an enterprise level. So you're not thinking of each of those things individually or on your own. You're thinking about them in the context of the entire enterprise, So, which is why it's so important and crucial if you're going to go into a management level. Like I said at the start, the CISM is a management level exam. Now let's talk about the study materials that I used when I was going to study for the CISM exam. What did I use? What did I find most useful for me? Of course, first, right off the bat, is the official study guide. The ISACA official study guide. That's the best material you can actually use to study for this exam. Some people find it boring, some find it interesting, but you have to read the official study guide information. Another piece of uh, material I found useful as well was the official question, answers, and explanations database, or this uh, CISM QAE, as it's called. Real life exam style questions for the CISM. You can actually use that information in there. You get the sample questions, what they look like, you get the answers, and you get an explanation of why the wrong answers are wrong and why the correct answers are correct. So it's a good way to build up your knowledge of how the answer expectations are with the CISM exam. So in terms of official material, you get the official study guide from ISACA and you get the Q for the CISM exam. Those two are crucial. I use both of them. I found them immensely useful. And again, the QAE in particular is so important because that helps you get into the mindset of how does ISACA expect you to think without that QAE, without knowing, knowing what that works, particularly what you get with the explanations. It's hard to know what to do. So you can get those. You can also get the review manual where you can actually review the information. And those are the official manuals, you got, the official information you can get for the CISM exam. Now let's talk other materials that are not official by ISACA but are really great materials. And one of those is Cyberi's CISM course by Kelly Handahan. That's actually another fantastic, great course you can take. It's a certification and training course, and it's useful to help you understand how getting to the ISACA CISM material, help you break it down into uh, very minute, understandable, easy to digest uh, videos. It's got a total of almost 10 hours of video. Uh, it's an uh, intermediate difficulty and you get 10 CPEs as well. So if you're collecting CPEs, this is great. You can look here, look at the content for the program and go us all of that, all the material you need to be actually able to cover the um, CISM exam. So we we'll go through it. You've got all that information in here and this will be fantastic. So if you're looking at that and you're looking for information around how you can actually take the CISM exam, Cyberi's information is a fantastic one. And Kelly Handahan, who is the course instructor, she's a fantastic instructor, does well with CISM material, with the CISC material, and a bunch of other materials. So if that's something you're looking for, that's something you can also consider as well. And then in addition to that, of course, trusty old YouTube is a great source. YouTube actually has some really great breakdowns of governance and risk concepts for the CISM exam, and you can actually use that. Just going onto YouTube here, for example, and just search for CISM and look at all what you can find. You can find a ton of information, you know, people share their experiences on how they pass the CISM exam. There's materials that actually have information on, it's a very great masterclass, uh, some free training videos from InfoSec Train, and some other information from Pete Zerger, the security. Now, YouTube channel has some information as well. So there's a lot of information. So if you're looking for, you know, relatively low cost information to train for the CISM exam, YouTube is a great resource. But one thing I would love to say about the ISACA, the CISM exam is if you want to pass, don't just memorize answers. ISACA loves asking questions that text, test your ability to make risk-based decisions. So you need to understand the why behind every answer. And that is so, so important. If you don't understand the why, it's going to be very challenging for you to understand how did, how are you going to make the most out of every question on the exam. So that's that. Hey, CyberSec Migrant listeners. If you're enjoying the show, help us spread the word. Share the CyberSec Migrant podcast with your friends, your colleagues, and your network. It's the best way to help others discover our awesome content and to join the conversation. 
And don't forget to follow us on your favorite podcast platform. We're available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, and any other place where you get your podcast, so you never miss an episode. And do hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. Your support helps us keep bringing you more valuable content, insights, and stories, and all these tips from the world of cybersecurity. And thank you for tuning in. And now, let's get back to today's episode. Now, let's talk about my daily routine. What are the things I did while I was planning for the exam? How did I study? What was my tips and, tips and tricks? What did I do that? And it can be challenging, but it is very doable. So here's what my study routine looked like. First, I spent a few weeks preparing for that, of course. Prior to this, I was already a CISP, and I also had a couple of other certifications under my belt. So it wasn't completely new to me. So for the first uh for the first few weeks, because I spent about six weeks preparing for this exam. Uh for the first couple of weeks, I actually read the CSM review manual. I had a notebook, I was taking notes on key concepts, writing all of that. And then from week three to week five, I was practicing about fifty to hundred questions daily from the QAE database. So that was very important. Practice, practice, practice. You need to get into the Isaka mindset to understand how the questions are phrased and how the answers are. Again, you know, you find something like, what is the best out of this? And if you look at the answers, all of them will seem correct, but really only one is the best answer. And of course, the explanations help you focus on why that question is wrong. And then in the final two weeks, I began to take full end practice tests. So focusing on, you know, timing myself, seeing, making sure that I could do it within the allotted time and make sure that I understood the question as I was going through it, focusing on the areas where I had weaknesses, where I noticed that there was um, deficiencies, so I improved on those areas so that I could actually make sure that I was fully ready for the exam on the day I was going to take it. And on the final week, I just reviewed my weak areas and I built confidence. So that was a great way for me to go into all my preparing for the CSM exam. So, and that confidence building in the final week, I can't stress that enough. It's so important to be able to do that. You need to build confidence for that final week because if you don't, it can be very, very challenging. So that was how I prepared. And if you find that's useful, please go ahead and you know use that. I have no issues with that. One tip I'm going to give you for studying, take and treat the exam like a case study exam. Always ask yourself, what is the best decision for the business? Again, it's all about the business. How does this affect risk and compliance? What would a CISO or a security manager do in this scenario? Those questions are so important. To pass the CISM exam, you have to learn to think like a security leader. So those questions are so important to get you to that frame of mind. What's best for the business? How does this affect our risk? Does it increase our risk? Does it decrease our risk? Does it introduce new risks? So important. If I was the security manager for the company, what would I do? Knowing that if I get it wrong, then the business is going to suffer. Not just this tool, not just this department, but the entire business. So that was so important. So if you're able to practice thinking like a security leader, then you will be in fantastic shape to take the exam. Now let's talk about my exam day tips. What are the things that I did the day of the exam to help me be ready? Exam day can be very nerve-wracking, but here are my Top tips to stay cool under pressure. Tip number one, read the questions carefully. I can't stress this enough. Read the questions carefully. Isaac loves tricky wording. They're not trying to trick you. They just want to be sure you understand it. So if you don't read the questions carefully, you might miss the crux of the question. So I can't say this enough. Read the questions carefully. Tip number two, if there's more than one answer that is correct, or it seems like there's more than one answer that is correct, Pick the one that is risk-based, the one that is more risk-based. Because again, don't forget, this exam is assessing how well you are able to manage the risk as a security manager. So if two answers seem correct and one is more risk-based, the chances are that is the correct answer to the question. Tip number three, manage your time. Don't get stuck, you know, drilling down and going down a rabbit hole on one single question. Think about it. What's the correct answer here? If you don't know the answer, don't dwell, don't dwell, don't dwell on too much. Just flag it and come back. Because unlike ISC2 exams, with the SACA exams, you can actually go back, review your questions before you actually submit. So if you're stuck on a question, don't waste time on it. Flag it for later review and go on to the next question, which might take you less time. So you want to properly manage your time when it comes to exams. And then when you're answering specific questions, one good tip, and this is tip number four if you're counting, is 
eliminate the wrong answers first. If you're looking at a bunch of answers for a particular question, and it's an answer that obviously doesn't align with security governance or risk compliance, it's probably not the right answer. So that way you've eliminated one out of four. And you've gone from a 25% chance of one answer being correct to a 33% chance of one of three being correct. So that way you can actually improve your odds if you were, you know, you're not totally sure. So if you can, Eliminate the wrong answers first. The more wrong answers you're able to eliminate, the easier it will be for you to actually identify which is the correct answer. And then tip number five, stay calm. If you have studied properly, practice exams, QAE, official study manual, review manual, you've done all the groundwork. You've got this. So just stay calm under pressure. And I will give you one bonus tip, which is, this was specific to me and this is something that I found out. With the Osaka exam, you can either take it remotely proctored, so from your home, from the comfort of your home, you connect, or you can actually go to a physical testing center. If you can get to a physical testing center, that is almost always a much better experience. I took it remotely proctored, and I wished I had taken it at a testing center. Again, some people are great at taking the exam remotely, which is fine. But I found that it was a bit of a challenge with remote proctoring. I had too many distractions, particularly from the proctor himself or herself, what the proctor was, it kept on interfering with me, you know. And it, it really disrupted my train of thought, my thinking, my process, all my planning. If you don't do well in such situations, I would recommend going to a testing center. Just bring that. It's going to be a much better experience and you will be fine. That's my bonus tip for that. And of course, with Isaka, you don't, you don't get your results immediately. Just like in ISIS, you don't get your results almost immediately. You are made to wait. But eventually, it go, it's going to come through. And when that comes through and you get your results, then you can smile and it was totally worth it for you to take in that exam. And so that's how I passed the CISM exam. So if you're preparing, I hope this short video helps. If you're preparing for the CISM exam, put a uh, comment below if you're studying for it and let me know what have you done? What are you finding useful? Maybe someone's going to watch this and find that useful as well. If you've already taken this, let me know what worked for you. Do you completely agree with all my comments or is this something that you did differently? Would love to know, love to hear from you what worked for you and what did not work for you. So put those thoughts in the comments um, and let me know what you think. Uh, leave a comment below. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to uh, this video so you can you know, hit the notification bell as well so you don't miss any of our new upcoming exciting content. Uh, share this with someone you know if you know someone who's preparing for the exam and thank you for watching another one of my videos until next time this is the cybersec migrant for me signing off take care